Hey, your homework is 912. I know that's ridiculous. We're skipping into chapter 9. Every group needs to have a book. You don't have a book? Grab one. Now we're going to start. Hey, people, I'm sorry in class. Thank you very much. So, reminder of what we learned yesterday, right? These math notes boxes are in your notes or in your uh, book. So, what would this be then? This pair, if you look at that pair together, what could we call this? Yeah, the, each angle is acute, but what do you call the pair together? What's this little box telling me? That it's a right angle together. What angle pair makes right angle together? Complementary, right? Because to complement someone is the right thing to do. So remember, complementary pairs add up to 90. What sort of angle pairs add up to 180? Supplementary. Somebody, um, because my lame um, push-ups exercise is helping you remember, came up and said, what if you just think of like your muscles, right? Like two 90-degree angles. Two 90s together would make 180. That could work also, if that helps you remember that. So they don't have to be attached. Remember, they can be disconnected as long as they add up to what we need them to. And then vertical angles are opposite each other. Adjacent angles are right next door to each other. All right, jumping into chapter nine. So imagine a tennis can ball, and we're going to have you make a hypothesis with your partner. And this is why Mr. Smith is just juggling these tennis balls. So if you've never seen a tennis can or a tennis ball can, they come stacked just like this, right? Three tennis balls stacked in a can. The smell is fantastic, right? Oh when you open God. fresh tennis balls, it, not joking. Like pop, yeah, they're open. sealed with a certain gas inside to keep them pressurized. So it look like it actually does have a scent. It's kind of like when you uh, crack open a brand new book where those like the pages have a scent. So I have a question. If I had this can of tennis balls, which I wish it was a can because it would be easier to work with, but I forgot mine at home. And I wrapped a string around it. So essentially, if I wrap a string around the middle of a tennis ball, back to where I started, I'm directly in the middle, right? I make a circle. Of course, we know that. Going around a ball, we make a circle. But how long will that be? When I lay it out flat, so I just met my other end, right here, right? My end meet up. So I grab where that goes, I look at this length. Good morning, Sarah Bolger. Please stop by the office. Sarah Bolger, please stop by the office. Thank you. Can you predict how it compares to the size of the tennis ball? So talk with your partners, make a prediction, write it down. The wrap around the middle, how does that length compare to the tennis ball? Chat, make prediction, I'll give you like two minutes. Anybody have a good prediction? Want to make a hypothesis if it's going to be 
as tall as the can, shorter than the can, taller than the can. Liam, what do you think? It depends. I would think it'd be shorter. You think it'd be shorter than the can? Okay. Anybody else? No one's going to like push back against Liam. Allie? I think it would be shorter than the can because um, it should be the height of the ball. You're thinking it's basically the height of the ball? Anybody else? Let me make a mark with a shirt in here to make that look easy. Alright, so that sharpie mark is where the string just meets itself. The height of the ball, I think that mark's a bit higher, so my fingers are pinching right at that mark. We're a bit more than the height of the ball, right? What about the height of two of the balls? Aubrey, you're close. Are we still, are we still need more? You can come up and help me. You grab this third one and the second on top. Ooh, we're still taller. So the the wrap, can you guys see this? Where that mark was is where my fingers are pinched. It's touching the desk. It's not even tight and we're taller than all three. Thank you very much. That's weird. The distance around the circle, so if you can imagine the circle without the ball inside of it, that distance around was taller than three of the tennis balls. Anybody know what we call that distance around? Yeah, circumference. So please, in your notes, label it circles, because this is going to be a day full of circle work, because we're going to try to pack in as much as James Bunger. How are you, sir? This is a um, famous alumnus. Famous. 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 James is going to do his Eagle Scout project here in the outdoor classroom. If you guys are interested in helping Wait, adult what is he doing? What is he doing? outdoor classroom stuff, that's what we're going to meet and talk about today. Um, so I need to see if I can get Mr. Smith back in here to kind of take back over. But circles, the distance around, and I'm only going to ask you to write circumference once. So that distance around is circumference. So please write this out. Then you'll never have to write it out again, at least for me. Circum, we know from our stem word study or root word study, means around. So just like perimeter, the furence here means distance. Distance around. Circumference, we can represent with C. Anyone do much cooking, baking, anything in the kitchen? You ever make a pie? What is the start of the pie? Crust, but it, it's not crust when you make it. It's crust when you're done. Yeah, dough. Crust is pie dough. The crust is the pie dough. This is how you remember That's circumference. Now, so this cool. this is not my joke. I will tell you I stole that from Danica McKellar. She has some great YouTube videos. She also races NASCAR. She's also an actress, or maybe, no. I think she's driven a NASCAR once or twice. She's really interesting. She is a female math mathematician and actress. I have a couple of her books, and that is one of my favorite things from her is crust is pie dough. The crust is the outer edge of the pie and everything under it. But think about the outer edge, right? That top part that you can see, that's your circumference. Pi, we know the approximation for. What is D here? Yes, diameter. So please label this. That is the diameter. So the diameter is the distance across your circle, which is actually the height of the tennis ball here. What's pi? Approximately. 3.14, right? How many tennis balls are in the can? Just three. Here's your extra heights. 
right? How our string was longer than the whole can. So it's that times your diameter, or in our case, the diameter is the height of the ball. I don't know where Mr. Smith ran away to, but if you can, okay. Um, if he's able to take this over, I can run outside with you guys for a couple minutes. Um, yeah, if he's available, that'd be sweet. So, that's the biggest thing, is circumference, crust equal tie dough. Uh, we're going to skip a lot of this. So, let's imagine that you have a bubble. You might circle back around after testing and do some of these labs, but let's imagine that you're blowing bubbles. What? Yeah, thanks. I'm glad somebody caught it. Um, I was just going to keep moving. Your bubble has a diameter of 9 centimeters. So go ahead, on your notes, jot down D equals 9 centimeters. We want to figure out how far the distance around the whole thing is. So set up your formula. Always write the original formula first. It will help it to go into your memory. See, some people not yielding the pencils. You should be writing. Fill in what you know. Pi is 3.14 ish. Diameter is 9 in this situation. Thank you for grabbing a calculator, Aubrey. Aubrey's going to compute this for us. We can do 9 times 3 and know it's approximately. What's 9 times 3? 27. So we know it's going to be slightly more. What do you get? And that is how far around the bubble we get. What's up, man? Any questions on computing? It's pretty straightforward. Now, another approximation for pi that I want to drop on you guys. If you have a calculator, do me a favor. That's an ugly pi. Type in the division. 22 over 7. And then if you're not typing it in the calculator, go ahead and write down pi squiggly equals 22 over 7. What'd you get, Emily? 2 So, the reason that this is an approximation, we can get closer to pi. Right? Like these numbers, uh, that should have been 1592. But it's accurate out to the hundredths place. And actually, our normal approximation 3.14, these are zeros. So, right, like it's not that close to the actual. You know, it's it's 1592 away. This 22 over 7 approximation, because this is our approximation, is actually closer than the 3.14. So if you need a fraction approximation, it's 22 over 7. That'll get referenced sometimes. Some problems will say solve using 22 over 7. Um, and we're going to skip that too. So, yeah, that's everything that I will do. Oh, we'll do one more. All right. Scientists, and we'll do a lot of work with the Earth as you head through CPM. Scientists have measured the diameter of Earth. So, like, you can take a spaceship up, spaceship up and measure across. Right? But they've measured the diameter of the Earth to be 7,926 miles. Pretty insane. Now, you think that's tough. Imagine actually traveling that through the center of the magma, the lava, the, yeah, you, you, you vaporize. So if we want to go all the way around the Earth, we're probably going to have to travel on the circumference, right? Around the outside, around the outside, around the outside. That's good job. So let's calculate the circumference here. Calculate your circumference using that diameter. Try it on your own. Are you cool to take over and do some circle area with him? We're just going to process through this. Okay, I'm with that. Yeah. 
So this one I'm talking about the last one, the one kind of you can get inside of it. Yeah. 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 So, what'd you get for your circumference? You should get 24,000, approximately 900. I think it's you, Ryan. 24,000, approximately 900. So, we are going to skip up into area of circles on the other thing that we're going to do once. Once they actually kind of process that, it is. I think you were in here when I did this with accelerate seven, but this is one of my favorite tools that you can use. So grab your resource page that I gave you guys, and the first thing you're going to do with Mr. Smith is actually really with your partner, calculate the area of the two squares down below using any method that you see fit. My suggestion is break up the square on the right into triangles, but you wouldn't necessarily have to. That's all up to you. You know that the radius, the distance from the middle out, is 5. You then are also going to count and manually try to figure out the area of the circle on the grid. Then we're going to try to make a statement about how we can calculate a circle's area. We used to try to do that like manual vision. What's up, dude?
estimate on the top one. Did anyone already do that? Area estimate of the circle based on the square grid. Estimate. Patrick, Patrick said 74. Anybody have anything that you would say was in that ballpark? Anybody else in the 74-ish range? Like in the 70s maybe? You guys were around 70? Okay, 70. Anybody else even try it? Alex over here. Mm -hmm. Seventy-eight and a half. Okay, so somewhere between seventy and eighty seems to be our estimate right now. Over here. Do that. So one of the ways you could have done that, and I'm not sure if you guys did it the same way or differently, but you could box in the ones that are totally whole squares. And so that you don't have to count every single one, like I made a big rectangle down the middle of six by eight. And if you box in that six by eight, there's 48 squares there in the center that are whole squares. Then you could do like a box on the right and on the left of that that are each six. So that gets us to 60. So there's 60 whole squares, I'll tell you. There are 60 whole squares. Then you have to figure out how many partial squares are there so when I did my estimate, I would I would probably say somewhere around about 72 because there was about 24 partial squares. So I figure, you know, count about half that space was how I figured it. So again, I'm in the same range as Annika, Zoe, Patrick, uh, who said the 78, uh, Alex. So I would say same ballpark. I think we can be a little more accurate with the bottom one, 23A. What is the area of the square in 23A? Area of the square in 23A. Lottie, you had it. 
bottom right square there. Oh, you had it, didn't you? This one? What was it? A hundred. How did she get the hundred out? Um, so, she found the radius, which is the five. Yep. And then, the radius is just a little out, so she doubled it, so it can be five. So to get across the square, you double the radius, that makes the side to side length 10 and if this is 10 across is the radius any different going top to bottom is the radius any different going top to bottom Liam is the radius any different going top to bottom and side to side no where on the square is the radius different if you start at the dead center if you go like to kind of the angle top right is the distance from that point to the edge of the circle different? Is there any spot where the radius kind of is a little shorter or a little longer? Circle. Is there anywhere where the radius is not 5? No! That's what a circle is. A circle is just a series of dots that are exactly the same distance from the center. So it better be 5 from the middle to the top. If it's not, then it ain't a circle. So we got 5 going up, 5 going down, so now we've got a square that is 10 by 10, and that's how Elle got her 100. But then how do you do this little uh, job in the bottom right corner, where the circle is on the outside of the square? So the circle is on the outside of the square in that one, so we don't want to use quite as much area. It's going to be smaller. Anybody get an estimate or a pretty solid guess on that one? Delaney says 50. You just guessing? Anybody think uh, that Delaney is a little high, a little low, or is she pretty close? Patrick thinks she's a little high. Anybody else a guess? You think what? Emily's was 50 as well, or was 52? 50 also. So Delaney just guessed 50. Emily calculated and agreed with Delaney's guess. And Alex also got 50. If you make a triangle out of that square, what would the base of the triangle be? You made a triangle out of the square. Alex made four of them. Mr. Hudson, before he left, said go ahead, kind of divide it up into a kite. Right? You do a line going up and down, a line going side to side. What is the length of each line? Five. When we find the area of a triangle, we do the base times the height and then times. Right. So five times five is? Twenty-five. And we're going to divide that in half, which is 12.5. And how many triangles are in that square? Four. Four. So four triangles. 12.5 times 4, it's going to be 48, and then you got to multiply those halves in there, it's going to get you 50. So, big square, 50, little square, or I'm sorry, big square, 100, little square, 50, counting squares, somewhere around 70 something. What would the average be between the big square and the little square? The average. If the big square is 50, Sorry, if the base square is 100 and the little square is 50, what's the average of 50 and 100? 25. One, uh, 20. Wait. 25. Flip that around. The 25 was the correct number, but you had to subtract it from the 100 or add it to the 50. 25 is the midway point, so 75 would be the average. All right. So, hold on a sec. If this one, Count the squares. What is the radius of this circle in the top picture? The radius of the circle in the top picture. What was it? Five. So all three of these circles are equal. This one we said is somewhere in the 70s. This one's 100. This one is 50. 
the average would be 75. The circle is somewhere in between the area of the big square and the area of the little square. Because if you look, in the big square, there's too much space, right? There's extra we have to cut off. In the little square, there's not enough space. There's these little additional spots we need to add in. So, we can assume that somehow you can calculate this circle to be around the area of 75. The reason this works is because okay, let's do unfreeze. Because if we take a circle, right, and we actually cut it into pieces. So let's start with just like eight pieces. If we cut it into eight pie pieces, if you take your pizza that you get next time you eat pizza and you line up the pieces, okay? Line up all the slices and then take half of them and kind of fold them back in. What what sort of shape is that sort of similar to? A parallelogram, yes, good. All right, well, let's see what happens if we cut it into a few more. Let's say we get one of those pizzas and we say, can you actually cut it into... Uh, let's go let's go double first. Well, that's triple it. Uh, let's go 16 first. All right. All right. We'll do this quickly. So we cut it in 16 pieces. Okay. Bring it back together. Parallelogram still. Is this a better parallelogram than the last one? Yes. Okay. Because technically it's not actually a parallelogram, right? These are little, slightly curved. All right. Let's go crazy here. Let's go from 16. Let's go to 32. All right, cut it, spread them out, bend them back in. Getting better? Yeah. Okay. Double it again to 64. All right, if we could order our pizza and say, could you please just cut that into 64 slices for me? Yeah, just like that. And then, you know, you take it home and you get your table at home and you just that is so cool. lay it out on the table and then you take each of the slices and you bend them back so in cool. wait a minute that is getting even better isn't it huh. almost a what well almost a rectangle right all right Go all the way. It'll go all the way to 200. Let's do one more. We were at 60. What were we at? 64? Yeah. All right, so let's double it one more time and then we'll go all the way. So 128. Uh, yes, it's just Donato's. Could you go ahead and do triangles for me? Yeah, just 128 slices. Oh my god. Huh. Let's the whole is going to be a whole rectangle. All right, before we do this last one. What are we, what are we laying out? What is that length? The time. The time. Wow. What is that length equal to? When we take the whole circle and spread it in a straight line. If we took the crust and we straightened it out. The circumference. The circumference. Right. And how do we find the circumference? We measure it around the outside, right? Okay. So, when we take the 200 slice pizza and we lay it out straight, that bottom line, right, whoops, right at the bottom there, is equal to radius times pi. How many of them? How many radius pi's are there? If this is radius pi, what is this? Another one, right? So two pi radiuses. 2 pi r. Does that sound familiar? What's 2 radius is equal to? Diameter. How do you find circumference of a circle? Pi times? Pi times diameter. There it is. That's the circumference. Okay. So then look at the rectangle that we get when we fold this guy back in. If, if this is the radius times pi, 
What's this height? It's each piece of uh, pizza has this. Actually, it has two of these. The two sides of the piece of pizza, not the crust, are radiuses. They're radii. Sorry, radii. So this is a radius right here. So what's r times r? It's tough. What's, what's 5 times 5? 25. What's 10 times 10? What's 10 squared? So what's r times r? R squared. R squared times pi is the rectangle that forms the area of a circle. That's why the formula works. That is why the formula works. And I'm guessing that means we're also out of time. You have to go five, actually. Oh, we still got time. Yeah, they, they Where are y'all going? Trying to pack up. We have extra time because it's a uh, testing day. All right. So let's figure it out then. Who's got a calculator? Most of you should have one. What is, let's use 3.14 as our pi. And let's go back to the sheet now. Let's make it all come together here. What's the area of the circle if you do the radius, which is what? Times the radius, which is times pi. So 5 times 5, or 5 squared, we already said that's 25, times 3.14. 78 point 5. 78.5. So, our estimate was pretty close. Around 75, around 70, uh, something, I said I think 72. What about, did you guys grab both handouts? All right, you got two minutes. I would like you to try to estimate and then check using the formula this last circle. If you show me the correct answer, then you can pack up. If you show me the correct estimate, you can pack up after that. Use 3.14 times. Use 3.14 for pi. Don't use your pi key for this one. We'll just estimate it to the nearest to the nearest unit. Units or units squared. You're good. But what is the even after the unit? Has anybody found the radius? Yes. Yeah, What's the radius? Yes. All right. So, what would you do next then?
then um, you guys will need this resource page when we run into the studio. Alright, so you know me, we'll take the Yeah, um, I would tell you to do a spreadsheet or do the docs or something that we're going to do and start to get stuff to get out. Um, and then it was going to be driven forward. Yeah. You need to help with other people where I can know. And of course, I'm going to do a Come from six to three. We're going to cover stuff from two two and two three today. And you're going to do graph paper. Graph paper. I'm not checking your entire master hole again. Like this. So then you need to ask that question to yourself. You need to take it in your notes, and like you could just clip it in in your math class. All right. So, what would happen, and depending on how our conversations go, you kind of depend on how much time to spend on things. What happens when you multiply using a scale factor of a third? Alex? Well, it would depend, but sometimes it would be hard to grasp the point. Yeah. Sometimes it'll be hard. Yeah, because if you were to divide them by two, it would just be just point two. Yeah, that's a no. Or, I mean, really, fraction at that point is better to think about, right? Point three repeating is kind of hard to think about. Um, yeah. So with a shape like this, with negative one, negative one, negative one, 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 two, and two, negative one, that'd be kind of hard to shrink it down, right? But a scale factor of one third shrinks it. Right, so we end up with exactly the same shape, but smaller. <coughs> We're not going to actually do this one. Mm. You can, sure. So, if we look here at 55. We have points. Go ahead and graph this if you want. It's not too bad. Your furthest point is 6, 7. So you got 0, 2, 4, 0. We got the origin point and 6, 7. 55. We're 
So look at your task. And again, if you have a workout, it'd be beneficial, like I say, every day. Your task with your team, make predictions about what would happen. So we've got a few lengths up here that we can identify, and some that would be really hard to identify. So we've got a length here of two, a length here of four. These lengths would be really difficult to identify because they're a diagonal. Right, so that's not really a countable length right there. Think about these questions. Because then I'm going to random card this to get people to things. What? Six, seven. Six, seven. What do you think will happen if every coordinate, and don't just say it quadruples, but talk in details. If every coordinate gets multiplied by 4, what do you think this would look like? What do you think the shape and the prime shape graph together would look like? Is one inside of the other? Is one on top of the other? Is, does anything not change? What all does change? We'll talk about that. What about if only the x coordinates got multiplied by a value? What if only the y coordinates got multiplied by a value? And they use such as 3, such as 2. So, and would it be the same shape? It's not a triangle, actually. The origin coordinates are different. The origin point is one of them. You have four points. All right, take a couple minutes to talk with your partner about those questions. Yeah. Yeah. You can also reference what it might look like if you were to do this sort of thing on a computer, like reference, because I feel like you guys have probably modified images on computers before. Whoa, who said shut up? Yeah, can you do this? I mean, you can, it's just not noticed. Oh, it's still our prime. 
If you multiply, you do something. It's our time. But did you you multiply by two, right? Yeah. Did the other points change? Did, did any of the other points change? Then all of them are prime. Because the new shape with that modified shape. And in general, don't lock yourself into just this shape. Imagine any shape in the coordinate grid, right? Because here there's some zeros. The zeros are kind of messing with us. But let's talk. So, you guys are orange, aren't you? Well, what happens if we multiply every value of every coordinate by a number such as 2? It will quadruple in size. So the whole thing, the length, we did it like six times in a row. We just started and got in trouble. So, well, you're saying, so what happens to the edges? Like that bottom edge is four right now. It turns into like 16. The edge of two would turn into like eight. And the area, we talked about this briefly yesterday. What do you think happens to the area? It would multiply by that scale factor squared. Right? So you take your, so if we were tripling the shape, the area actually get multiplied by nine. Okay, so what if we only, Nina, work with the x values of a shape? Okay. Okay. And the other one, the one that we have, is uh, you're saying you have, ooh, not one, but something there. Uh, we were multiplying by three, so actually six times three, eighteen, so it'd be like out here, okay, weird. Yeah, just the x's, right? So that didn't change, that connects. Okay, so, gross. Do you think that shape is similar? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Piper, you're making a lot of hand motions. It has the same amount of size, and um, the Y is still the same, because the Y didn't change. The X is still the same. Mm. That's why I don't know how it's going to be. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, think about it on a computer. You ever stretch something? Sideways, and you mean to like pull the whole thing, but your oh, corner yeah. accidentally just goes one direction, and all of a sudden your shape like looks really weird. Yeah. Like your face that was a nice smile now, like it looks like yeah, you got a monster yeah. face, and like you're a cyclops or something. So this, when we only multiply one uh, factor or one coordinate, not similar. It's just even like um, not reminding so like if you put a visual thing in mm -hmm. visual box. If you only multiply by the y coordinates, it's kind of only stretching it up. But then if you multiply by the x, it's kind of only stretching it left. That means the corner will always keep the same shape because it's multiplying by both the x and the y. So essentially, what you just said is that will cause a horizontal stretch, but not keep the shape looking the same. So be careful, guys. Similar does not mean kind of the same. In mathematics, Similar means identical, except for the size. 
So this is not identical except for the size. It is a different shape. It doesn't orient the same way. The angles aren't the same way. To be a similar shape, all your angles have to stay exactly the same. Why are you on top of that? This angle is obviously not the same size. This angle at the bottom, obviously not the same because this line is not pointing at the same angle that it was originally. So be careful, not similar. What about if I only multiply the y-axis? No, that's different size. Zane, what do you think? If I only multiply the y values. Right, it'll look something like that now. Oh. Is that the same shape? Yeah. No. No. Oh, yeah. It's still a quadrilateral, but it's not the same shape you have. Exact same shape, same angle, same everything except for the size. So the square, the square, the square, well all the angles are still 90 degrees in every square. This might have side lengths of 2, side lengths of 3, side lengths of 4, side lengths of 5, but if they're all squares, they're all similar. Even the rectangles? Or triangles, right? as long as the angles stay the same, if I stretch every piece of it. So it's the difference on the computer, so like if you've got an image, it's the difference between grabbing the corner and going down like this, versus going out, or versus going down. This will not keep your shape the same, right? Because this corner's fixed, this doesn't move. So if I stretch this way, it looks really awkward. I stretch the whole thing out, it keeps its proportion. Yeah. So a square to a rectangle would not be similar because rectangle is Correct. Oh, I have a paper cutter for you now. Alright, and last question here. What if I multiplied like my x values by one number and my y values by a different number? Cool. I, I think it was like it was connected out but still uneven though. Because like I'm thinking about the circle doctrine, like if you move it like two, imagine that as like two inches or three inches, if you move the x uh right. Be careful that when you multiply it's like doubling or tripling, not moving that oh. many. Okay, so just be careful we're not adding. Multiplying. So it, but it would still make it uneven if one side was really. You're right. Yeah. So it makes it uneven because the factor, like the multiplier, not like an adding three inches or anything like that. Alright, um, we're. Nah. So a reminder on similar figures, definitions, and everything if you need those. Uh, by the way, they do not have to be oriented the same. So this triangle with legs 1 and 2, and it's a right triangle. And this triangle, legs 2 and 4, are these similar? Yes. Yes. Scale factor? 2. 2 or 1 half, depending on which way you go. It doesn't matter that one has been turned. Totally fine. Still the exact same thing. All right. We're moving on to 63. All right. So identifying similar shapes. Everybody should have the resource page. If you don't, grab it. Now, this is going to take a minute. I have scissors in the back, so if you would be so kind as to pull the scissors up onto the table desk that recently. The shape one, this, this, um, sorry, that resource page. So we are quickly, please don't hurt yourself, going to cut these shapes out and then justify which shapes are similar with each other and how you know. So if you start with A, Figure out every shape that is similar to A. Then move on. Are we going to do that? You're just, you're, 
kind of putting shapes on top of each other, whatever method you think, but I, you shouldn't really need wrap paper here. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, we don't use scissors much, so I don't get nice scissors. Yeah. Yeah, they, they are print to scale. So they have printed exactly how they are meant to print. Zen, are you playing today? Yeah. You're at Snopper One, right? I was playing yesterday. I look, I will get to everybody as I can. You don't have to. I wait to go to track until later in the season because normally you guys are figuring out what events you'll actually like. Excel at. So I wait till a little early. Oh, I, I what do you mean you don't let it play? Do you think they'll play at all tonight? Uh, probably not because it's all in Do you think they'll play next week when cards take on walls? Uh, I don't know yet. I don't know if they're going to have Alright, well, I'm probably going to come tonight. And take pictures of eighth I mean, graders. I know. I was just saying, don't expect me to be like actually out there. I'll no, but sure. then, oh, sure. no, Wait, this but Wait. then, when you know, like if you know there's a game you're gonna play, let me know. This year has ten. Okay. Yeah. Wait, so do you have pictures of like all the boys? Every gender, every sport. Wait, like, I, I, I got a boys lacrosse and no, it's just like, for you work for your kids participating. No, I can't do it's not a one. Oh, yeah, people give you their pictures, you like to put them in the book. Yeah, so if you do anything else, send me some pictures. Or give me dates and I'll try to make it out there. But Zen is hoarding all of them. I'm hoarding it. I will, um, I will find money. You guys gotta get the info like far enough ahead that I can send it. So give me that piece. Maybe give me pictures of you doing, um, no, you're, yeah. Well, I am my book. book. My, I'm sure my mom will be taking pictures. Did we get pictures of the book? Yeah. Yes. Yes. And we have to cut out the O D shape too. Everything. Oh, I didn't mess up. Oh, I'm just saying. Oh my gosh, well, I think we're going to mess up so bad with that copy. Is he good? He's barely all right. First question. First question you're really trying to answer. Which one is congruent to the original? What does congruent mean? What's con mean? Together. Congruent means together, they're identical. Like they're exactly same everything, even size. So your first objective is what is exactly the same. Then, your second question is which shapes are the same shape, but different size, meaning they're similar. They have been scaled in proportion. Every dimension has had the same thing done to it. As you end up with your paper scraps, please put them in the recycling. Yeah. Are you I sure? They're all very similar. Mm, be careful using that word. I made that pun first. No, 
in your notes, that would make me happy. Congruent angles, congruent means exactly the same, right? Congruent angles, but different lengths. Now, if the length is the same, it's not similar, it's a congruent shape. Which, yes, a congruent shape is a similar figure, but that's like calling a square a rectangle. Wait, a square is a rectangle. Yes, but the better name is the more accurate one. So, if a shape, so talking about A compared to the original, we would not say A is similar to the original. We'd say A is congruent to the original, if it's exactly the same. You, told me. you have them cut out. Rachel? Shape A is exactly identical. I think G is not similar. The figures that are not similar. D as in dog and G as in dog. At the end of dog is G. D. Yes. Uh, it doesn't exactly say. But, I mean, so if you can line up what angles are congruent and are not, that will normally be able to tell you how it's stretched. Yeah, it looks like it's more like long. Yeah. Long. Yeah. Long. Yeah. Long. Yeah. Long. Yeah. Long. Yeah. Wait, is that the only one? <laughs> only two? B and G are the only ones that don't match. So oh, wow. the rest are similar? Yeah. yeah. Alright, we're going to skip on to 66 now. <laughs> I wonder if you can give a break from this, like, why, apparently thank next time we will all be mad at them. Okay, thank you. You guys got mad that we didn't blow bubbles, but now you're mad that we cut shades. So. Hey, did you guys have any questions? Nothing that I can do. Yeah, yeah, I agree with Rachel. Grab a plunger. Okay, try the inverter. Three. What? I think maybe it's the next shelf over. It might be in the middle one. Yeah. All right, Quan is looking at shapes P and Q. Quan is trying to determine the way to go from shape Q to make shape P and wants to know what the scale factor is if they're similar. This is a good time to point out if shapes 
are not similar, there is not a scale factor. So you can't say like, oh yeah, the two Do you care for the people talking when they're giving you information that might be useful? Because that, I'm just confused. Right, we're in the accelerated class, yet we're going to talk at the same time as an instructor who went to school doing the duties. Any and all of you, like, any of you guys that just choose not to pay attention. So, first thing you need to do, figure out, is P a correct dilation of Q? Did he do it right? If it is, what's your scale factor? Now, what I was trying to say is if you only check one or two sides, you can fall into a trap. Because if they only multiply one of the points, or they forgot to do a couple, like you can have the bottom could be doubled and the height could be doubled, but then another piece of it got screwed up. So be very careful, check every part of this shape. Questions I don't want to answer. So take a moment, talk with your partner. If it's correct, what is the scale factor? Justify how you measure. What do we think? Is it a correct dilation? Yes. Yeah? yeah? Okay, now. So, yeah. I think the scale factor is one. Are you sure? Yeah. Well, what makes you think that? Okay, so this, I heard May talking about this was like 10 and 5, 3 and 6, 1 and 2. This we can't really count, but we could say it's like 2 diagonal-ish, and this is like 4 diagonal-ish, but it's not 2 and 4, so just be careful with that. You'll do diagonal lengths next year more so. Uh, so, crap. So you said you're not sure about this. Yeah. Are you sure about this? Oh, so you look at like the whole width, not really, yeah, yeah, I see, yeah. Yeah. Well, be careful, because don't label it like four and two, because they're yeah, diagonal like lines. Like this. show Oliver what some of you are like, wait, uh, you went from the very, like the flat, right, where the triangle ends, mm -hmm. 
So we'd have to do the same thing over here, which would be there. So, did this triangle sitting on top double? Yeah. Yes. Okay, okay. So if, and I'm glad you did that though, if we break this up and we look at this as 4, 8, 1, probably, right? It's cool. Now this is just because they're trying to have a computer do it and the, the line takes up thickness and that's why this looks less than 1. Your brain's kind of like being very critical. But that's 1 and that's 2. So it is a scale factor of two, no question mark. We are absolutely correct. We got time for a couple. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. You have a question about this? Yes. Because he's saying that the similar figures they have the mirror angle with different lengths. So right angle, right angle, right angle. Right angle, right angle, right angle. Whatever angle this is, it'll be exactly the same here. Whatever angle this is, this obtuse angle, will be exactly the same thing. Even though the legs are different sizes, that doesn't matter. So it wouldn't, uh, is that like completely congruent? It wouldn't find the angles without you Well, that's a way you can check. Because your angles have to be the same. So if you were given degree measures, like if you were told that this one was 40 and this one was 140, then this would have to be 40 and that would have to be 140. For the angles, because they have to be exactly the same. Oh. Yeah, angles never change with similar figures because when you stretch, the angles stay the same. Should, because like when you stretch that picture, if the angle of your chin changes, you're going to look weird, right? So then it's not similar. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, 67. Uh, never mind, no, we're going to skip this. Like, I should have notated which ones you were going to skip. 64. Alright, now again, it says you're not actually making a new shape. Uh, you're not seeing that. So using the triangle shown at the right, predict which scale factors below would enlarge or reduce. So just take a moment, this should be pretty clear. Okay, one Ian, what do you think five thirds would do? Enlarge, why? Yeah, bigger than one. Why is one a reference point? What would multiplying by one do? It's the same. Nothing, right? It would do nothing. Ava, what about three fourths? What do you think that would do? So we call that a reduction. Right? It would reduce, or you can call it shrink, or whatever. Um, Annie, what about seven sixths? It would. What do we call that? Proper word. Starts with an e. Enlarge. I just want you guys to get used to using the vocab. Alex, what do you think about? Uh, sorry, Koenig, about two thirds. Uh, make it. Uh, it would reduce, right? So if we wanted to, which I'm not going to make you guys do this. Any fractions less than one, they'll fit inside, right? And especially if that's the origin point at the corner, which we a lot of times do, they'll shrink down inside of it. What if we multiply by like a scale factor of one to twelve? Will? Oh, it would expand to one, so like the area would be one to twelve. Ooh, be careful! It would actually be one one hundred forty-four to the original. Sorry, I said one twelve. Like 1 over 12. So if that's your scale factor, we square that and it become 1 yeah. over 144. So I'm not even talking about area, but that triangle, itty bitty, just right there. Right? 1 12, it's going to have one unit, one unit, and then whatever diagonal the next thing. Because every leg, every length will be a 12th of what it was. I think we're just about done. Yep, we are done. So you guys have five minutes to go ahead and start that one.
Um, if you guys see um, Izzy or Kaylee and want to let me know that the video is both classes, but I forgot to cut the video between, um, they'll just have to start the video in the middle. So that's why it's been recording for an hour and 20 minutes now.